mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our consideration is going to be from St. Mark's Gospel, the first chapter, beginning at the 21st verse. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or or oppressed by demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. And rising early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everybody is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came out. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and casting out demons. This is the Gospel of our Lord. It was the Sabbath day, and so on the Sabbath day, Jesus goes to church. And on this Sabbath day, he took Simon, Andrew, and John to church with him. It's always nice when you bring friends to church with you. For all the times that these four men, uh, Simon, Andrew, James, and John, for all the times that these four men had gone to church, They had never seen anything quite like this service on this Sabbath day. A man with an unclean spirit stood up right in the middle of the service, and he began interrupting Jesus during his sermon, saying, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. So we Lutherans are not so used to people interrupting the sermon like some churches are. For some churches, it's perfectly normal for people to stand up and shout, preach it, brother, praise the Lord, amen, right in the middle of the sermon. In fact, if in those traditions, if the congregation is too quiet or unresponsive, the preacher will ask for a little feedback. Can I get an amen? Such things leave the typical Lutheran pastor in total confusion and render him paralyzed. Jesus is obviously not a Lutheran. He's neither flustered nor flabbergasted at the rude interruption in the middle of his sermon. In perfect stride, without hesitation, he says to the unclean spirit, be silent and come out of him. And with a loud cry and convulsing, it does. And the congregation seems not to be very Lutheran either. Rather than sitting quietly as though nothing really is happening or going on, there is an outbreak of conversation within the people that are gathered. What is this? A new teaching and with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. So trust me here, I'm not suggesting that you should be more vocal during the sermon or the service. You get your chance to do your speaking and sing those things that are in bold print. And that's enough, because after all, we are Lutherans. But I do hope, I do hope that you realize that something just as extraordinary happens here as happened there. Unclean spirits are cast out by Jesus. He commands them to come out of you and out of me, and by his authority they do. It is once the divine service is over and we return to our lives in the world that then we are free to speak. Then we are free to encourage and to talk about what happens here every Sunday, which is just what they did. At once his fame spread everywhere throughout all of the region. It's been my experience 
that some of the most important pastoral work that is done on a Sunday morning is done immediately after the service. And it seems like that's the way it was for Jesus, too. As everyone files out of the synagogue, Simon comes to Jesus and tells him about his mother-in-law, who is ill. Peter's mother-in-law must have had the flu. Maybe it was COVID. But she was too sick to come to church. And immediately, Jesus left the synagogue and entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. Have you ever wondered just what it was that they told him about her? Did they try to warn Jesus that he should mask up and not get too close, lest he catch whatever she had not realizing, never realizing, that the whole reason that he came down from heaven to earth was to catch just what she had. It's the whole reason that he came down from heaven just to get close to us, to you, to me, so that he might certainly catch what we have. He would catch all of her sin. He would come down with a good case of crucifixion unto death. All because, all because he got too close to her. All because he got too close to you. So whatever else they told him about her, Jesus went right to this person, this woman. After all, it's not the healthy who need a physician, but the sick. And the doctor had come all the way from heaven to earth just to make this house call. Knock, knock. Who's there? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's eternal plan to redeem the whole world was moving unflappably toward its goal and the eternal destiny that all comes to bear on this one man, Jesus of Nazareth, and he is here for just this one woman, as if he had come into this world just for her. And he came and he took her by the hand and he lifted her up. That's the resurrection word there. He resurrected her and the fever left her. When the unclean spirit came out of the man in the synagogue, there was loud convulsing and crying. But here, here, the action is so simple, so quiet. He comes to her bedside, he holds her hand, she sits up, and the fever is gone. No drama, no shrieks, no crying, no thank you, Jesus. And she began to serve him. Literally, the text reads, and she began to deaconess him. Peter's mother-in-law is the first deaconess in the New Testament. In response to the love of God in Jesus Christ who visited her in her time of need with his divine authority, she simply gets up, puts on a pot of coffee, gets them something to eat. It's all very Lutheran. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by the demons, and the whole city was gathered together at the door. They would have come earlier, but you got to remember that all of this was happening on the Sabbath day. Under good Jewish law, going to the doctor on the Sabbath day was forbidden because it was too much work to get there. And even if they had gone, any good Jewish doctor would never have treated them on the Sabbath day because it was too much work. Today, we know better. Today we know that the Sabbath day is the day that all of the sick come to the doctor to be healed. And the doctor is always in and always ready to heal you. Today, it's not coming to the doctor on the Sabbath day that violates the law of God. But the staying away violates the law of God. 
And so that evening at sundown, as it got dark, which marks the end of the Sabbath day, they all came, they lined up at the door at Peter, Peter's mother-in-law's house. That's where he was. They had been to church. They had seen Jesus' authority to cast out the unclean spirits. And after church, they went home. They got their sick mothers and their fathers and their sons and their daughters and their neighbors. And as soon as the sun set, they brought them to Jesus. Come with me to see Jesus. He can heal you. And why do they do this? Why do they do this? Well, yes, they love. They love their husbands and their wives and their sons and their daughters and their neighbors and their friends. And isn't this just what friends do? They bring their friends to be healed by Jesus. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and had many demons. Maybe you can just try to picture the scene in your mind's eye. Jesus moving down this long line of people, one at a time, placing his hand on them, blessing them, curing them, cleansing them, healing them, and each one a new person. Not just because they were healed of what ailed them, they'll get sick again, They'll die. But the kingdom of God had come to them, to me. He touched them. He touched me. He blessed them. He blessed me. It was as though he had come into this world just for them, just for me. So I wonder how many of those gathered at that door that evening got up and began to serve him. There may not have been a lineup at the door here this morning, but we have come to this place, this house, for the same reason as they went to that house. We heard that Jesus was here, and we have come because we are sick with a sinful fever, and we want to be healed. He touched you. He touched you in your baptism, individually, one at a time, just as he did in Capernaum. He touched you, and he called you by name. He healed you, he cleansed you, he took away your sinful fever, all as though he had come down from heaven just for you. And then you got sick again, didn't you? And so you came back to the doctor to be healed again, didn't you? I forgive you all of your sins. And again, you were healed. He said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you, just for you. And again, you were healed, just you. He healed. And then you got sick again, didn't you? And you came back again, didn't you? And the whole cycle repeats itself over and over and again and again. But the day is coming, listen to me, the day is coming when the cycle will be broken and you will never get sick again. Surely he has borne our diseases and yet there is still cancer. But the day is coming when we will be clean and no disease will touch us again. These extraordinary things that Jesus does are just signs that point to the goal that lies ahead. This is just the appetizer before the main course arrives. And rising very early in the morning while it was still dark, he departed and he went out to a desolate place and there he prayed. It had been a busy day for our Lord. It started early. It ended late. It was night, late in the night. He's up before the sun, before any of the other disciples are up, and he's off to a solitary place to pray. Literally, the text reads, he departed and he went out to a desert place. 
the desert. You're going to hear a lot about that next Sunday. The desert is the place where the devil is, and there he is tempted. And the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all of the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. It was all very tempting. He had become very popular. The whole city had gathered together at his door. Simon and those who were with him searched for him and they found him. And they said to him, everyone is looking for you. That's pretty heady stuff. Everyone wants you, Jesus. He was becoming successful. Great things were starting to happen. This little group of four fishermen and their rabbi, well, they suddenly had a full-fledged movement on their hands. They had enough enthusiastic supporters at least to win the primary, if not carry them all the way to the throne. Then Jesus said to the devil, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The healing that he came down from heaven to bring to you can be administered in only one way. It is by the way of the cross. All cures are nothing but temporary patch jobs apart from his suffering and his death on the cross for you, the cross that he will die on for you. So rather than risking, rather than basking, rather than spending more time in this fame and glory pleasing the crowds that are gathered around him, he said to his disciples, let us go on to the next town that I may preach there also, for that is why I came. He does not want the acceptance of men and women because he already has the acceptance of the Father in heaven. He does not want the praise of the people because he already enjoys the praise of the angels and the archangels and all the company of heaven. He does not want to be crowned King of Israel because he is already king of the universe. All that he wants is to heal you. He came down from heaven just to heal you. Just you. Amen.